In today's video, I'm going to explain the differences between LED and flash lighting for macro photos and why you might want to choose one over the other. I use lighting all the time in my macro work and some of my best images, or at least my favorite ones, have all been taken using flash. Usually this one, the Godox AD200. But this is just a pretty regular camera flash and it works in exactly the same way as something like this Canon Speedlight. Or for that matter, pretty much any cheap speedlight that you might have picked up on Amazon. And then on the other side, we have this an LED panel. Now these ones come in pretty much any shape and size you can think of. This one is a little bit bigger and round. This one is smaller and rectangular. Some run on batteries and some are USB rechargeable. So there's something for everyone. So what is the difference then between using this LED panel and this flash? Well, the biggest difference really is that the LED panel is a continuous light. So it's either always on or it's always off, while our flash is exactly that. It's a flash, a flash, a flash. It gives a very quick burst of light. So straight away, we've come to the main benefit of working with LEDs. That light is always there, so you can see exactly how it's falling on your subject. If you're composing your scene through your live view or through your viewfinder, and you're holding your LED above whatever your subject is, maybe it's a mushroom, maybe it's a flower, maybe it's an insect that you found in your garden, wherever you put that light, you can see exactly how it's gonna appear in your image. But that isn't how flash works. Let's take a look at this example to see what I mean. So I'll focus close up on this lovely carved giraffe's head here. Just as a bit of an example, it's not the most thrilling of images. But with my regular flash, I need to start off by changing my camera settings, in this case f9, 160th of a second, um, which I have already done. And then I've got to hold a flash in my hand and, and kind of imagine what would be a good position. Maybe I want it um, coming down uh, from the top. So I'd have to take the shot and then look at what that light looks like in camera. I'd have to see what it looks like, see how those shadows are falling, and then decide to change it up. So every time I then move this light, I've got to take another shot to see how that light changes with the different angle. So it becomes this constant trial and error, making these little micro adjustments as I light it up in different ways, just so I can figure out which way I prefer. Using the LED though, you can see how as I move the light around in my hand, you can see exactly how it moves around the subject, it falls in different ways, so we can have it overhead, we can bring it off to the side, move it around the front, we can change that mood completely, and we can see exactly what it is doing before we even press the shutter. So it makes it much, much easier to actually get your lighting right. But LEDs only work like that so well here because I've dimmed the light in my studio. Because these things, while they might be a little bit bright to look at, they don't put out anything like as much power as a flash. That's why when I'm using LED to light myself for videos like this one, I'm using beasts like this that have to plug into the wall because they require so much power. And I'm not really gonna take one of these on location when you can carry something like this. Also, I don't have plugs outside. But even this mains-driven LED beast doesn't put out as much light as this small battery-powered flash. So let's take these out of the studio and actually see how they work in the real world. Out here, it's bright. So this LED light panel suddenly doesn't seem as powerful because it's competing with the ambient sunlight. And to be fair, it's doing an okay job of lighting things up here because it's quite an overcast day and I'm working in the shade. So those LEDs don't have to work quite as hard to overpower the light. But if you're in the middle of the summer sun, then a small LED panel like this isn't going to cut it. It's just not bright enough to overpower that sun and become the main light source in your image. What it might do is just give enough extra light to highlight your subject a bit, or simply to fill in some shadows, as you can see in these shots here. But that flash is much more powerful, meaning I can completely control how that light falls in my scene. 
So that means I can work at narrow apertures like f11, but still using fast shutter speeds to ensure that my macro subject is pin sharp. At f11 and 200th of a second, this tulip is beautifully lit with my flash, but using the same settings and switching to the LED panel, oh dear. It just can't compete on power. And it's the same here with these pretty yellow flowers, lovely lighting using the flash, but that LED panel, even on max power, results in a very dark scene. And sure, you can adjust your camera settings to bring more light into your images. You can open up your aperture even more, or you can use a slower shutter speed. But slower shutter speeds could mean a blurry subject, particularly if you're photographing a lovely little flower on a windy day and it's moving around in the scene. And then of course, using a wide aperture is going to mean that less of your subject is in focus. So whichever option you choose, you're going to be having to make a compromise. So for me, that is why I rely on flash for my photography rather than continuous LEDs. That higher power that it can put out means that I can achieve whatever results I want in whatever conditions I find myself shooting in. And it means I can create these kinds of high impact dramatic shots even on location and they look like they've been taken in studio. And because flashes like this put out a burst of light so quickly, you can freeze action in a way that you just can't do with LEDs. And that lets you get shots like these. The other benefit is that flashes like this and certainly slightly smaller ones like these ones tend to be a bit cheaper than LED panels. And it's much easier to use flashes and speed lights with modifiers of all kinds to help shape and control that light. And controlling that light is absolutely critical to all of my photos whenever I'm working with light, whether it's my macro photography or my product photography. The downside to flash photography, of course, is that you can't see it in real time when you're composing your image. So it does take a lot of trial and error to balance your camera settings with the flash settings and then to find the right position for the light when you're taking your shot. Because when you start moving your light around and moving it further away or closer to your subject, it changes the relative power that this thing is putting out. So you always have to change your settings accordingly. It's really a trial and error process. So that does mean that there's quite a steep learning curve when you first start working with flash. But like anything, the more you try it, the better you will get and the quicker you'll be able to get the results that you really want. So for me, flash is a tool that might be more difficult to get to grips with than working with continuous lights, but it's a lot more versatile and is exactly that versatility that helps me get a lot more creative with my shots. But I would love to hear what you use in your own photography. Maybe it is flash, maybe it is LED. Maybe it's a combination of both, or maybe you don't use any lighting at all. As always, the beauty of photography is that there is no right or wrong way to do it. This is just the way I do it. But do make sure to leave your thoughts on working with lighting in the comments below and make sure to hit that like button whilst you're at it. And hey, if you got this far through the video and you don't already subscribe, then maybe give the subscribe button a little press as well. And I will see you next time.